He threw left hooks in an angry frenzy, producing knockouts that made him a cult hero to his local Chicago fans. Networks and promoters all saw a star in the making, but the glare of the spotlight became too much for him to bear. He became a what could have been story, a fighter whose nickname reflected the inner turmoil that got the best of him. Lenny Lepagli was born on April 8, 1960, in Melrose Park, Illinois. Growing up in a working-class neighborhood, he got into more than his share of fights, even beating up one of his teachers. More than one friend suggested that he look into the sport of boxing, if only just to stay out of trouble. Lepaglia joined the local gym at age 16 and began training under Pat LaCasa. Armed with a naturally powerful left hook, the converted southpaw won the 1978 Chicago Golden Gloves novice middleweight championship at 165 pounds. LaPaglia turned pro at the age of 20, starting his career with an eight-fight knockout streak before meeting the reluctant Maurice Pitchford in 1981. In a bizarre fight, soon to be a recurring theme in LaPaglia's career, he watched as his opponent turned his back on him. LaPaglia didn't hesitate, hitting his opponent on the back of his head. Enraged, Pitchford retaliated by tripping LaPaglia, who fell to the canvas. Pitchford then jumped on top of LaPaglia and began wailing away on his opponent. The referee pulled the fighter off LaPaglia and allowed the bout to continue before disqualifying Pitchford for repeatedly sticking out his tongue. Returning to the ring two months later, LaPaglia resumed his knockout streak. In October of 1982, he made his New York debut, knocking out Charlie Hecker in the third round. Reporter Mark Maturo wrote that, quote, LaPaglia looks like the real McCoy word spread of the hard-hitting Italian and his knockout streak. In March of 1983, he was matched against a fellow Chicagoan, John Collins, in a nationally televised battle. The fight was seen as a throwback to the days of crosstown and ethnic rivals. Collins brought in the Irish fans. La Paglia brought in the Italians. Altogether, they sold out the UIC pavilion in Chicago. But La Paglia didn't tell anyone that he came into the fight at less than 100%. He suffered a hairline fracture of his cheekbone during a sparring session 10 days earlier. LaPaglia decided not to disclose the information, fearing that his first shot on the big stage would be canceled. Lenny LaPaglia, a tough kid from uh, tough streets of Chicago. You know, the rap on you is that you've got a spectacular record of 19 and 0, 19 knockouts, but they were all tomato cans. Uh, I fight anybody who gets in the ring. You know, if they're evenly matched, uh, which I think they were, underly matched, I just. I'm there. The one thing is to fight the other guy on the other side of the ring. All right, you come off the streets. They, you fight like you came off the streets. Street fighting taught you how to fight? No, street fighting and boxing are two completely different things. If you win here. When I win here. All right, when you win here. Would you be ready for a Bobby Chez, a Schuler, a James Kinchin? With the right work after this fight, we're in no hurry at all. Um, I really can't answer that question. It has to be up to my handlers. Quick prediction. Who wins it? This man's going to win it. Schedule for 10. LaFagli and the black. And Collins and the white. Oh, that hand by Collins. Right on target to rock LaFagli. Well, advertised as a bombing contest. That's what it is. Collins has come right out to bomb. And I must say, LaFagli's taking everything right on the chin. 
fighters very tight. Collins just got hurt by an uppercut. Lepagna just nailed him, coming in and buckled his legs. themselves and the fight hasn't even started. That left hand for Collins opening up strong, but here is Lepaglia right back with combination. Lepaglia looks tough and ready. Collins getting nailed now. Left hook setting up the uppercut, and Lepaglia continues to score Collins after the uh, early blows landed by Collins. The feeling you're sitting on a powder keg here. Both guys can punch. Now Collins coming back. Lapagla seemingly the tougher of the two right now. He's hanging in there. He's dictating everything. After a rocky beginning, Lapagla has come back. Yeah. Boy, your food. Nice stiff cabs. Second one in the gym. You hurt him with them punches. Don't get careless with the right hand. You know what I'm saying? The doom beautiful. He's doing beautiful, but in the other corner, Carmine is telling John Collins he's never gone past three. Box him. You don't have to knock this guy out one round. Box him. You're the experienced man. And, of course, it's easy to say, but when you got an enraged Lenny Lapagli in front of you with that killer instinct that he apparently possesses, you got to let it fly with him. But toe to toe from the opening bell, John Collins in the white, Len Lapagli in the black. With that left hand. Collins is trying to establish a boxing rhythm where he can box him and keep him out and punch hard. Then he's trying to get in and keep to disrupt this rhythm, not to let this fight get into a rhythm. He just go toe to toe. Boy, toe to toe is a big gamble with either guy. Lenny grabbed hold, but that street kid, that street toughness came out at him. He went right back to fight. Oh, launching left by Collins that got in. Lenny has to go right into the gutter, right into the street with that fight. Like, go right there. That's Lenny's fight. We are opening minute, round three. And they've been going at a sharp pace from the start. Collins opening it up. LaPaglia right back. Lenny LaPaglia. Oh, combination by Collins. And LaPaglia just left it off and came right back. Top, top, Lenny LaPaglia. Looks like he has a scratch on his eye that, 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 and at the same time has some blood on his shoulder. I don't know where the blood's coming from. There's none on Lapaglia. And he looks to have an angry red blood that could break open at the right at the angle of his left eye. Right eye is also beginning to swell up right under the eye of John Collins. Good shot by John Collins. Boy, this Lenny Lapaglia can take a shot. Beginning to think that Collins is going to get frustrated. <laughs> Advantage of Lafaglia. That crowd does look much shorter than Collins. And again, doubling up on the jab successfully. And he has Collins backing up. There went somebody's mouthpiece. Mouthpiece that was. Oh. Well, frankly, again, rocking Collins. We have not had a knockdown to this point, but both have been rocked. Oh, right hand by Lapagli. 
clear. That's Stump Collins. And Collins' legs have buckled. He had a hard time getting his left leg back up under him. Good, good exchange by Collins. See, Collins builds up those points. Back comes LaPaglia. Good round for John Collins. We'll be right back. When the bell sounded, ending round five, this is what took place. The bell had sounded. This is all extracurricular. LaPaglia went with the combination on Collins. The referee tried to separate the two. And Collins decked LaPaglia with the right hand. But it was all after the bell had sounded. Now, are they going to give him extra time? Are they going to penalize him? There's a big argument going on with the commission. The referee was stepping in. That's not counted a knockdown, but that doesn't make any difference. It's not counted a knockdown. Are they going to give him extra rest? No. no. They have not. They have not. Oh, what a brouhaha can, can come of that. Uh, this is round six. Now, uh, it was LaPaglia who was guilty of the, uh, the extra hits after the bell. I and mean, then Collins had no choice but to retaliate. Can't blame Collins. Collins is smiling like a wolf. He already knows now that one of his punches put him down, and LaPaglia is not an iron man. He can be had. Definitely the referee, on seeing that extracurricular activity, should have thrown his body between the two fighters. Good punch by LaPaglia. No, Jake Collins. Head says no. And a chant of Collins from the crowd here in Chicago. It is more of a Collins crowd. And Collins continues to smile in the face of LaPaglia. Collins, I believe, feeling very confident. LaPaglia having difficulty breathing through his mouth. Four and a, a knockdown, 5-3. Uh, Collins smiling that wolfish smile like saying, you can't catch me. I'm too far ahead. He's not. Lenny LaPaglia is that of an ancient gladiator. He is determined. His head is down. He's looking almost through his brow. Oh! Left hand by Collins off a whirling move. That was a dangerous punch, but he got away with it. Dangerous because he could have gotten caught. Here's the right hand by LaPaglia, but Collins with the oh. counter. Oh, butting by LaPaglia. Intentional. Intentional butting on the part of LaPaglia. and have no doubt but he can get starts 
doing that. Believe me, Lenny LaPaglia is still dangerous. He's got dynamite right now. He's once done loaded. Don Collins appears to be ahead on the scoreboard. Looking to extend that unbeat record to 27 and 0. Lenny LaPaglia coming in at 19 and 0, all 19 by knockout. Lenny just complained of a thumb in the eye. Double left by Collins and LaPaglia hurt. That left eye is closed. LaPaglia's left eye is closed. He cannot see. Oh, he's getting terrific punishment now. And we're less than a minute left in this final round, and Collins just dancing and sticking the left hand. No question, Collins is not easing up. His pride has got him. He wants to finish the five lift. You could make a case for stopping it. White, he's fought so bravely and there's so little time left. Yes, you could, but he's not in trouble as far as his reflexes are concerned. It's just that his face is falling apart. Let me get easily quit right now. Can't see out of the left eye. It's so close. It's so close. in a moment. Stanley Berg, 47-43, winner unanimous decision, Collins. The Ring Magazine's Bert Sugar scored the fight a draw and wrote the bout up as the fight of the month. Even in losing, La Paglia became the network darling as they now bid for his services for high-profile fights against fellow prospects like Bobby Chez and James Shuler. The Collins fight made Lenny one of the most popular young prospects across the country. Promoter Cedric Kushner said, I've never come across somebody that gained so much popularity in defeat. But La Paglia answered the call of the streets instead of the ring. Promoters booked him for fights and he either wouldn't show up or didn't return their calls. It took five months before he stepped back into the ring, this go around against Danny Blake, a journeyman with a 5-6 and six record. An enthusiastic crowd of over 2,000 greeted La Paglia's return, only to shower him with boos afterward. La Paglia had won the first two rounds, but in the third, he suddenly signaled surrender, turning his back on Blake. I couldn't believe it when he quit, referee Stanley Berg said. I said, are you crazy? But he told me the guy hit him too much in his stomach and he couldn't breathe. La Paglia was booed as he left the ring, having to be escorted to the dressing room by security guards. The Illinois State Athletic Board withheld the fighter's $10,000 purse, pending an investigation. Dr. Glenn Bynum examined La Paglia in the dressing room, but found no evidence of an injury. La Paglia's manager, Bob Fusello, looked for an excuse, pointing to a nose operation La Paglia had after the Collins fight. But other rumors swirled over why La Paglia quit without an explanation. Most attributed his lack of conditioning to the fighter spending way too many nights partying on Chicago's Rush Street. His own trainer hinted to commentator Al Bernstein that La Paglia hadn't trained too hard for the fight. Seeking to light a fire under La Paglia, promoter Kushner brought the fighter to New York where lightweight champion Ray Mancini was in training. Kushner wanted La Paglia to rub shoulders with someone who had the same background as he did and was a world champion. In Mancini, La Paglia could see someone who had the fire and desire to rise in the sport. After apologizing to the athletic commission, La Paglia was allowed to box again. He rematched Blake four months later and was knocked out in the first round. La Paglia disappeared from the boxing scene for an entire year after the knockout. He periodically asked a promoter to include him on a card, but always failed to show. In February of 1985, La Paglia finally resurfaced going the distance against a three-fight novice. He won two more fights by knockout before being decisioned by Carlos Tite in what many saw as a hometown verdict. Angered, La Paglia took off another seven months, but returned with his old fire. After the loss to Collins, La Paglia said, I lost interest in the game. I guess I gained it back now. I didn't feel like quitting anymore. I felt I'd have left something behind 
if I didn't get back into it. Lepagli won five bouts in a row until facing a stern test in the durable Marvin Mack. Counts in his first 19 fights. Then he really elevated in fighting John Collins, a classic fight in the Chicago area. They called it the Battle of Chicago, and Lepaglia lost a 10-round fight, then went into uh, the doldrums. Knocked out twice by Danny Blake in Chicago. Once in three rounds, once in one round. He really lost it for boxing. Led to a premature uh, retirement, was out a year, but has since come back, and over the last couple of years, has won eight of his last nine fights. And Randy Lepaglia on the right realized that this could be his ticket finally to recognition and some stardom. He's got to get by Marvin Mack, though, tonight. Lepaglia is now ranked number 12 in the USBA. Lepaglia looking for one big punch. You saw a few moments ago he launched an overhand right, trying to just walk in and not get careless against Mack, who's a sharpshooter. There's that hard right, and Mack looks out of it. Mack is hurt in the first round. Under 30 seconds to go. The legs are wobbly. He was caught by LaPaglia, and that is it. Mack is complaining. Vinny Renoni has Mack in a bear hug up against the ropes, and LaPaglia has done it in the first round. Lenny LaPaglia did it with a big right hand. At the weigh-in today, you just were totally into yourself. At all afternoon, you were totally into yourself. Did you feel this was going to happen tonight? I never expected to knock him out in the first round. I did something that an uh, Olympic gold medal medalist champion could not do. And uh, I knew if I had him hurt, I'm not going to let him off the hook like Frank Tate did. But uh, I don't know. I never expected to knock him out in the first round. I wanted to go a few more rounds, but I'm glad they stopped the fight because I definitely would have hurt him after that. I don't know if you realize it, but that was your 14th first round knockout. Oh. I don't count first rounders anymore. I was expecting to go at least eight, nine rounds hard. Did you really think after you hit him with that shot that the fight would be over? I never thought it would be over right then and there. I, I thought the referee would let me go back at him and finish him off. But I'm glad that the, the referee did a, a very nice job. The man was hurt, and I, I would have stayed on him like white on rice. You've certainly come a long way after those kind of embarrassing losses to Danny Blake when you just didn't have your head into the fight game. You took right. about a year off, now you're back. What has teaming up with Carmen Graziano meant to your career? Well, Carmen's meant everything in my career. He's teached me how to settle down. He's teached me how to not only be, be a gentleman inside the ring, but outside the ring, too. He's uh, matured me more as a fighter, and uh, I'm really into it now. My head was, wasn't into it in Chicago. The, the, the stuff's just not there here. It's out here. The environment was bad, and I'm with Carmen now, and he's like my father. We're going to take a look at some of that action from the first round. Let's hear your commentary. All right. Well, what was this? This was when you had Mac in the corner. I believe this is it. I can't see him hurt right yet. Here, right here. Uh, that was the left right. hook that lifted up his head. The right hand right there. Oh, yeah, good right, right hand. You missed the, you missed the missed, follow up. Boom. That was, that was a good right hand. No, I, once it, you heard him, you did the yes. finishing job. Referee, well, the referee did a good job of stopping the he fight. He had no alternative but to stop that fight. He was about to get hurt. He was going he to was, If they would have let me go at him, would say, well, see, the referee's got his job to do, and I got my job to do, too. You know, it's a bad break for Marvin if the guy stopped the fight. But it could have been a blessing in disguise because he could have got hurt. You've been talking about that you want to fight for the junior, uh, the super middleweight title, rather, against Chong Pal Park. Now, Park beat. Marvin Mack, yes. would you ever go over to Seoul, Korea? I'd go anywhere and place it on, on the, anywhere on earth to fight him. Anywhere. Okay. When I take him back, I ain't taking him with decision. I'm going to stop him. Carmen Graziano, what's next? Well, we're going to look for a park for the uh, middleweight uh, championship, the super middleweight. Uh, Lenny's a very mature, very tough, very durable, um, uptight kind of a guy that's learning how to relax. He's explosive. Every punch is explosive, and he's a great finisher. When he hits you with the first punch, he'll have four more good, hard uh, punches. He's not going to throw uh, caution to the wind. He'll stay in there and gamble with you, knowing that he's got a good chin. And, you know, 26 knockouts, that should tell somebody something. Carmen, I realize you'll take a first-round knock at any day. You too, any Lenny, day, but anytime. don't you wish you had a few more rounds, perhaps? Yeah, I think he could have practiced some of the things he was doing. However, uh, was we're very happy that the referee stopped the very fight. Happy. Very happy. Did a very good job because I would have definitely hurt the man. It's a bad break for Marvin Mack, but like I said, it could be a blessing in disguise. The victory would be the closest LaPaglia would get to a shot at a legitimate title. He received another televised date, defeating Stacey McSwain, before coming up against contender 
and ESPN favorite Doug DeWitt. But DeWitt needed to establish something. I haven't seen him do this in, in I would say, any fights. He did a little bit against Quinones, but in his last few fights, I haven't seen this. DeWitt said last night that if he did not win this fight, if he couldn't beat a guy like Lenny LaPaglia, he was going to hang up his gloves. <laughs> Never heard that from a fighter before, have you? No, no. <laughs> Once in a while. <laughs> LaPaglia is landing off those ropes very effectively. You know, they both have good jabs, and in both cases, it's an underused punch. Uh, you know, this, this could shape up to be a very, very interesting and entertaining matchup, and the first round is indicating it. And the two losses to McCrory and Tommy Hearns really set the whip at. Well, DeWitt on the charge, and again here in round two, his back to Lenny LaPaglia to the ropes. If you are going to beat Lenny LaPaglia, I think you have to pressure him. You have to keep him on the defense. Don't let him set up to throw those bombs and make him fight every second of every round. That's what DeWitt's trying to do. Oh, they trade left hooks. I'll tell you, I'm not sure LaPaglia didn't get the better of that, but here comes Doug DeWitt again. Oh, left hook knocks LaPaglia sideways. LaPaglia in big trouble here in round two. He comes off the road smoking. Oh, my. Well, this is just what we thought it would be. The left hook is the most important punch in this fight for both men. It figured to be, and it is. They both have good ones. There's the win. Left hand. One minute remaining in round two. Look at the hand speed. Now that's when Doug DeWitt is good. He has great hand speed. Papagli trying to fight off the ropes. And occasionally doing it well. Double jab. Triple jab. None of you can't handle a jab. You hit him with every jab you threw. Now let's not do what we did on that. <laughs> Just circling jab. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's telling you that. Circle, he can't handle a jab. Then you get a power shot. Inside, turn him around. Inside, turn him around, get your punch. Turn he has had LaPaglia backing up since the opening bell. Doug DeWitt's a good inside fighter. <laughs> and I, I think LaPaglia, quite frankly, is a little better off on the outside. Because DeWitt is a little more shorter arm. He's quicker in the inside with his hands. See, look there, he got the left hook in. Round four, wow. Paglia is in trouble, and DeWitt lands a thunderous uppercut. DeWitt uppercut, a very important weapon. Well, he is just bouncing combinations off Lenny LaPaglia. See, and there's the hand speed and the conditioning. He's able to keep throwing these punches. And LaPaglia has trouble with stamina. Good left hand underneath by LaPaglia. He had trouble, I thought, in the McSwain fight a little bit. Now, had Stacey McSwain not hurt his right hand during the course of that fight, he might have turned up the winner. Oh, what a right hand by LaPaglia! Uh oh that hurt the whip. And it came out of nowhere. Another right hand. Witt's talking to the ref. Oh, there, that's a typical Doug DeWitt trick. <laughs> oh, my. What a chin displayed <laughs> by Doug DeWitt. And that's the old Doug DeWitt. He Interesting, LaPaglia has just found that right hand in this round. There's DeWitt going to work inside again. And look at LaPaglia saying, come on, take your best shot. Winding down now, final seconds of round five. Oh, what a war we have seen in this one lead for DeWitt so far. I've got a lot bigger for DeWitt. Did you, which, who did you give the uh, fourth round? Four, the, fourth round to DeWitt. Yeah, and the fifth to, and the fifth to Lenny Fifth to LaPaglia, yeah. yeah. And one of the earlier rounds to LaPaglia. LaPaglia, that's the difference in the score. 
Now there's the jab of, of DeWitt, and it, it's a good one. So does Lepagli have a good jab. Like I said, they don't use it enough. Let me see what it does. It's very interesting to watch. He says, uh-uh, forget it. So he'll dance, and he says, I can take that, Lenny. Lepaglia now looks really tired and very discouraged. Also appears to have been bothered by what may have been a thumb in his right eye. Lepaglia blinking that right eye. He's got a pretty good mouse under it. You know, a lot of people have questioned the courage of Lenny Lepaglia, especially after his bouts with Danny Blake a couple of years ago when he really just quit a couple of times. He was having, oh my, left hook just hurt the wit. He's in trouble. Lepaglia can't follow up. There's the exhaustion factor. A tremendous punch by Lepaglia. Opportunity is waiting. Oh my. We talked about the hands coming down from DeWitt making some mental errors, and he did it again. Boy, in a round in which DeWitt looks so good. Oh, on the break, Lepagli hits him. DeWitt is ready to go. No legs left. No legs left for Doug DeWitt. Now it's a matter of he's got to clutch and hold on for survival. We are in the ninth round, one to go. And DeWitt, no question about it, way ahead on the scorecards. I would say so, but as uh, Dave said, it's survival time for Doug. We made the point earlier about DeWitt making the mistakes and relying too heavily on his chin. He's done it here. What a ninth round. Oh, but wow. DeWitt, the spots seem to be phased. Following up, and it gave DeWitt a chance to get back into it. Look at Lenny LaPaglia. My, he's fired up. Wow. Lepagli is going to go right to work and lands a left hand. Lepagli off of him here in the 10th and final round. Oh, my. We've had some wars in the last five months, and this one ranks right with him. Nope. It's a slip. Benny Ranoni in to dust off the gloves, and now they're going at it again. Well, to use the nine lives of a cat analogy, DeWitt used up about eight of them, but he's still there. <laughs> Well, you remember back earlier this year, gentlemen, both of you on hand for that war between Baysmore and Harold Knight. This one surpassing that. I tell you, just about. And look at DeWitt with those combinations. What a match. Bye. The crowd is on its feet. Here is the official scoring. Joe Pasquale scores it 97-92. Richard Strange has it 96-94. And Al DeVito scores it 96-94 for the winner. By unanimous decision, Doug Cobra. To okay, thanks, Al. Here with Lenny. Very close fight here. Your thoughts on the outcome? I started too late in the fight. I tried tiring him out, get him tired in the later rounds and knocking him out, but I, I did almost knock him out. When I staggered him, I thought he was only faking. It was my, my fault. I thought he was going to try to suck at me like Stacey McSwain did last his fight. But uh, he's a good fighter, and I guess I just started too late. Describe here what's going on around as you uh, get a good shot. Oh, yeah. See right there, I, I thought he was only faking there. Because his eyes were looking right at me. You were still thinking of charging here, though. I went to put him away. I did, but he held on. And he's a good survivor. You know, uh, I got no excuses. Uh, I just started too late in the fight. And I thought it could have been a split decision. I took defense too much to the offense. I waited. I lost two pounds at the weigh-in. And uh, I'm not, I'm not disappointed. I mean, I'm disappointed I lost, but uh, I'll be back. You ain't seen the last Lenny Paglia. Right, right, I just right, want right, to say to my, my mom, all right, mom. Say what, my brother, the Trombino family, Rubrite family. Okay, Lenny. He thinks there was a loser here tonight. Such a good fight. We'll go back. Thanks. The decision was closed, but sent Lapaglia back to the drawing board. In July of 1988, he signed for another televised appearance this time against Art Jimerson on the MSG network.
Jimerson recalled seeing La Paglia in New York before the fight. We ran into Lenny and his Rat Pack, Jimerson said. They all looked greasy and dirty, even after taking showers. It was in their blood. The two exchanged threats on the street and during the pre-fight press conference, with their bad blood spilling over into the ring. Active year in 84. Is 12 and 2. Overall, 31 and 5. There was typical Lapaglia. He banged a left hook to the body and got hit with a left hook by Jimerson. He's banging the body beautifully. He is really hitting Jimerson with some good body shots. 14 times. Lenny LaPaglia has put a man to sleep in this round. Jimerson is going right out at LaPaglia. But once it's been done to him. Danny Blake did it to him back in 1983. Jimerson is fighting a dumb fight standing right in front of this man. You gotta move on LaPaglia. Keep your blows up, fellas. Keep your blows up. Robert Foley back in March tried the same thing and hit him, but he got hit in return and had his body ripped apart. And then he was stopped in round three. Baglia scoring big. Jimerson stays right there. Trying to go punch for punch, trying to crowd LaBaglia. In the gym. Back in May 87, Marvin Mack took on LaPaglia. Marvin was reputed to have one of the best chins in boxing. It ended in the first round. Jimerson coming right back at LaPaglia. He's not backing off a bit. At the press conference the other day, Jimerson was doing some heavy talking, saying how he's going to just beat up on LaPaglia, make an oh, answer. Good left hook by LaPaglia. Lenny said, I'm going to hurt this guy. I'm going to hurt him bad. He stopped Jimerson. He's shaking him a couple of times, but Jimerson comes back. Jimerson scoring the left hook. <laughs> this is why Lenny is a fight fans fighter. He's there for you. But I'm surprised that Jimerson is just as there. Papaglia with a hard shot to the midsection. Oh, what a shot it was. Jimerson almost doubled over. Good left hook. Backs him off. Jimerson... Looking for help from Fred Yusey. He thought it was a low blow. That time there was a low blow. Yes, it was, but not that left hand. It looked like a left uppercut. A few seconds remain. Can he finish him? In the Brown one. Oh. And a couple of punches by LaPaglia after the bell. That was a borderline shot. Oh, that wasn't borderline, Randy. That left hook was clearly after the bell. Round two scheduled for 10. Unless they were late with the lights. Paglia comes out bombing again. Now, I think I see a trickle of blood. It looks like from the right nostril of the Paglia. Not definite, though, about that. Jimerson going to the uppercut. Very hard, strafing uppercut. The Paglia warned to keep his punches up. But again, I felt they were, they were up. I, the Paglia with the uppercuts to the body. I see nothing wrong with those shots, Sam. Maybe the midsection to Fred Yuchi is low. Good left hook by LaPaglia. Jimerson is hurt again. Trying to cover up. He's wobbly. LaPaglia continues to bang that body. Certainly Good left hook by Jimerson. Certainly the Cardinals could use a hitter like this on their team. <laughs> that time LaPaglia was a little low, but he got a good right uppercut in there. I am amazed that Jimerson is still on his feet. Not for long, though. He keeps taking those body shots. He's going down. Step back and break. Now watch your head. Watch your head, both of you. Well, right after the head warning, the heads bump together. They're in close again. And you don't see that too often. LaFaglia again took all the wind out of Jimerson with a left hook to the body. Jimerson hangs in there. Good right hand by LaFaglia. Watch your heads, watch your heads. Final seconds of round two.
Jimerson getting in some good shots. Rocks LaPaglia, who taunts Jimerson, puts his guard down, and takes some punishment. What a dumb thing to do. Bobby Cassidy went to the tournament. Rather, Tommy Gallagher of Lenny LaPaglia is going crazy in the corner saying, get your hand up. Bobby Cassidy, one of the trainers of LaPaglia. I don't care what LaPaglia thinks of Jimerson. Just doesn't make any sense to drop the guard down and just stand there taking punches. Macho doesn't win rounds. Let him go, let him go. LaPaglia landing a good flurry. Good left hook by LaPaglia. And the knees of Jimison went with that shot. Coming to the end of round three. the bell and he was warned that next time it happens he'll have a round taken away from him this is round four scorecards Randy what do you think I've given every round to Lenny LaPaglia although that last round might have gone to Jimerson I gave Jimerson the last round I thought Jimerson started well LaPaglia had a couple of good flurries in there Jimerson lands the left hook what a war this has been neither man has been down but it has been toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Neither man has been an arm's length, more than an arm's length away from the other. Look at this. Jimerson landing both hands. Now you have to wonder about LaPaglia standing up, taking all this punishment. LaPaglia's mother's wondering, too. She's out in the hall here at the felt form, screaming her head off. Big scoring by LaPaglia. Left hand rocks Jimerson. He's still standing somehow. Jimerson is ready to fall. Hey, it's wobbly, but he's hanging in there. Lenny LaPaglia, I don't know what kind of underpinnings he's standing on now. Jimerson keeps coming. And getting in. Look at LaPaglia. I just can't believe it. Oh, you talk about macho. You also talk about dumb. Dumb, absolutely. What is he trying to prove? I think his dislike for Jimerson is so intense that that's why he's doing it. That's what's keeping Jimerson on his feet, his dislike the, for LaPaglia. In the meantime, Jimerson could steal around with LaPaglia doing that. And again, it's Jimerson landing, and LaPaglia with his both hands down, taking the punches. Oh, just tremendous shot. Every one by LaPaglia. LaPaglia daring Jimerson, saying, go ahead, give me your best shot. Many of those shots are just picked off on the arms of Jimerson. And I'll tell you, these, this is a round that is very okay, tough to score. All right, come on. Quick, 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 quick. Each man is taking turns, landing punches on the other, and landing good punches. Coming down to the end of round four. And Jimerson finishes with a flurry. Nobody oh. gives a shit how tough you are. You understand what I'm saying? Now here's what I want you to do. All right? Every time you get close here, I want you to step to the right, chop an over here, right, and left uppercut. When you finish punching, tie him up and walk him to the right. Listen to what I'm telling you. Fifth round, Jimmy. Fifth round. Give him fucking Jimmy. Listen. Oh. You understand? Yeah. Tie him up and walk him to the right. All right? Now, the punch with the what was he doing? Look punch. at Lenny. Took a few shots, just stood there like Superman. But here's my chin. Bang. No. I don't know if he thinks he's Superman or Super Macho Man or what, but I just can't believe that any anyone would let down their guard and let themselves be hit with those punches. A little bit after the furious face of the first four rounds. Can you blame him? Good combination by Jimerson. Look at this again. LaPaglia with his arms down, just taking the punches. And 
been broken. Lenny LaPaglia drops his arms and finally dropped to the canvas. Art Jimerson. Now it's LaPaglia coming back. All right, come on, step back and break clean. Step back and break clean. Watch his shoulder. Stop. Oh, if his will is broken, he's not showing it there. Is he going to take the will of Jimerson away? LaPaglia digging down. And battling back, and Jimerson keeps coming. All right, step back and break clean, fellas. Come on, break clean. LaPaglia coming back. And it, I tell you, Randy, outside of that knockdown, this would have been a LaPaglia round, but okay, he got on, knocked back, down. Back. Break clean, come on. Break clean, box. Wow. Jimerson. Staying on top, and again, LaPaglia wilting. His arms go down, and he goes down for the second time in the round. And Yuchi was slow getting on top of him. Five, six, up again. Seven, eight, three knockdowns in a round will end the fight. Fred Yuchi is checking him out. And the end of round five. Country watching us around away from us on the FNN and on the FNN score network. Let's go! Round away and this is Sam Rose along with Randy Gordon. Scheduled 10 round fight in the light heavyweight division. This is Lenny LaPaglia who was down twice in round five and also had the round taken. Two knocked down to the fifth round by Art Jimerson. It's scheduled for 10. It's been like this from the opening bell. Toe to toe war. Each fighter banging the other. LaPaglia letting his guard down, holding his tag a couple of times. And watch out, boys. Most of those shots thrown by Lenny LaPaglia were picked off on the arms of Jimerson. He got them in and he hurt LaPaglia. Again, LaPaglia, LaPaglia's arms down. He just can't keep his arms up, Randy. Look, the guy's never been a defensive fighter. He's got no clue how to get away from those shots. Earlier, it was macho. Now, I think it's just out of frustration. And again, there go the arms down, and there goes LaPaglia through the room. This time, I think it could be it. You've got to get back in on your own volition, and here he comes. Uh, LaPaglia said, that's it. That's it, it's all over. Lenny LaPaglia is stopped in the sixth round. Art Jimerson withstood the pounding of the first couple of rounds and took it away from Lenny LaPaglia. TKO, Jack. LaPaglia cried and apologized to his fans after the loss. His cornermen attacked some hecklers in the crowd. According to reporters, LaPaglia's entourage got the worst of that fight also. A beer doused one of his handlers. Another was punched and cut. I let everybody down, LaPaglia said in a post-fight press conference. All I can say is I'm sorry. I don't know if this is it. I've been down before, but this ain't it. LaPaglia then kicked a chair on his way out. He remained out of the sport for the next five years, returning in February of 1993 as a cruiserweight. No longer the trim fighting machine he was 30 pounds ago, LaPaglia knocked out a procession of tomato cans before being stopped himself by Tony La Rosa. In March of 1995, he was a last minute replacement to face the legendary Thomas Hearns. Unrecognizable from his debut on NBC 12 years earlier, LaPaglia was now 34 years old, with graying hair and love handles around his midsection. The long past his own prime Hearns made short work of him, stopping him in the first round. LaPaglia retired after the loss. He remained out of the public eye with online rumors suggesting that he fell back into a life of drugs. He was found dead in his home from a heart attack on July 6, 2013. He was 53 years old. LaPaglia remains a hero to those who knew him. Those close to him all described Lenny as a loyal and tough man with a kind heart.